Hey, welcome to another episode of Inspirational Focus with Deacon Terry Acox. Uh, uh, Terry has been a uh, deacon with the Roman Catholic Church, and today we're going to be talking about the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the information, so stay tuned. It's always a pleasure talking with you about uh, many aspects of the Roman Catholic Church, and um, I, uh, you, you picked a very good topic I found very interesting, and that is the Blessed Virgin Mary and some of the dogma, some of the truth, some of the beliefs. Uh, so um, it's always a, a, a pleasure talking with you, Terry. It's a pleasure being here with you, Patrick. Uh, just just for the listening audience, let's see, you're a Roman Catholic deacon. Yes, sir. Uh, in the uh, Portsmouth area or the Sider County. In Sider County in the Diocese of Columbus. And seven different churches that you help. Uh, uh, on a ro rotating basis yeah. with some other deacons. And, and, you know, as a permanent deacon, you know, ba basically uh, you're not, you, you have certain things that you can't do that a priest, a uh, Roman Catholic priest right. can do. That is true. Uh, but one of, the, one of the areas that I think you're very known for is your ability to uh, uh, give sermons, give talks, meet with individuals right. through some of the... We can, uh, a deacon can give a homily during the Mass and um, a deacon also reads the Gospel, okay. proclaims the Gospel. Um, among the other responsibilities, of, not responsibilities, but privileges that we have is you know we can baptize people and we can marry people outside of the mass, and we can um, do a, perform a funeral oh, outside okay. of the mass. I, I didn't know that. Huh. Well, that's interesting. And I, I know that you brought a lot of information about the Blessed Virgin Mary. Uh, and I, I'll be be quite frank with you. I know very little bit about the history. <laughs> and so I'm, I'm hoping that uh, you can sort of shed light on some of my, my questions. Like, for instance, the very first question I would have is, uh, and for some of the listening to audience, the Blessed Virgin Mary is who? The Blessed Virgin Mary is uh, or was a young young lady uh, just approximately uh, 2,000 years ago. Uh, she was chosen by God to be the mother of his son Jesus. Oh, okay. And as a result, he allowed her to be immaculately conceived. Okay, now what do you mean by immaculately conceived? She was conceived without sin. Um, all humans since the fall of Adam and Eve, all human beings have been born with what is called original sin. I see. Except the Virgin Mary. Oh, okay. She was God... Uh, performed the miracle that conceived that she was conceived without sin and as a result she didn't have some of the tendencies to sin that normal human beings oh, have so she remained sinless throughout her life oh okay all right and the uh, immaculate conception also sort of connotes uh, that uh, Joseph even though Joseph uh, was married to her uh, Joseph was not the father. Joseph was not the father of Jesus. But the, let's make it straight for the viewing audience. The Immaculate Conception had to do with the conception of Mary by her parents. Okay. By the conception of Jesus was oh, divinely okay. conceived. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Huh. Um, and I, I know that the Roman Catholic Church celebrates on December... Uh, in, in December, um, the Immaculate Conception of Mary. Yes. And also, uh, we, we have other other days in which we, in the Roman Catholic Church, uh, 
honor Mary. Right. And one of those is the Assumption. The Assumption is in mid-August. Yeah. Um, for the Mary was assumed in, by God into heaven, body, and soul upon the moment at the moment of her death. Oh, okay. Well, I, you know, you, you bring up some some good good points. You know, we uh, first of all, it was two thousand years mm -hmm. of history, and maybe you can sort of take us through. Um, let, let's see, there have been been a number of different. Uh, Dogmas. Yes. And dogmas are beliefs of the Catholic Church that they. Dogmas are beliefs of the Catholic Church that are proclaimed either by a, a council. For example, the Vatican II was a council. Okay. Uh, they could have, they didn't, but they could have pronounced some type of dogma, which we, is, when that's done, then the faithful are required to believe that okay. as, as absolute truth. Okay. All right. Uh, there are three Marian dogmas, I believe. Uh, four. I, I believe there there are four. They just uh, slipped one okay. in not too long ago. Okay. Uh, the, the first um, one is. Uh, the, the first one regarding is regarding the motherhood of God. Uh, Mary was declared by the Council of Ephesus to be the mother of God. There was a, a heresy at the time that separated the divine, the divinity of Jesus from the uh, humanity of Jesus. And as a result, Mary was not believed by some heretics to be the mother of God. Because so, if she wasn't the mother of God, then in question would be uh, what was was Christ really the Son of God? Right. Okay. All right. So the next um, dogmatic statement had to do, dealt with the perpetual virginity of oh, Mary. Okay. Uh, this was declared by the Council of Lateran, Lateran. In, in the seventh century. Okay. Uh, the council, and, in and again in response to a heresy at the time, so the council has declared that Mary was a virgin, um, even beyond her birth, uh, to, during and after the birth of Jesus, and forevermore uh, for the rest of her life. Oh, okay. She right. and Joseph never had any type of relations. Oh, I see. I see. Jo Joseph was was primarily there as to be the, the father of Jesus, bringing he, him up. He was the foster yeah. father of Jesus. Yeah. And uh, also the caretaker of Mary. The caretaker, right. Yeah. Okay. And so the third one deals with the Immaculate Conception. Right. See, see I, growing up, I, I never put the two together um, you know, so again, the Immaculate Conception, what you're saying is, is the belief that when she was born, when Mary was born, it she was, was born without sin. Without sin. Without original sin. Right. All right, original sin imparts upon all humanity oh, okay. a tendency to commit more sin. Oh, I see. <clears throat> and since she was born without this tendency, she remained sinless all of her life. Okay. Now the reason for this is if God was going to put a his son, right, uh, who is part who is God, right? Uh, you wouldn't want to you know, have this this infant born in a sinful human being. I see. So he kept so that was the reason why he kept I Mary see. pure for her entire life. Hmm. That's interesting. That's interesting. So that was in 1859, and that was by Pope Pius the Ninth. Mm -hmm. uh, was it he that had a great love for the Blessed Virgin Mary? He well, many of the popes have a great respect and and uh, love for the Blessed Virgin. Um, Pope John Paul II was especially fond of the Blessed Virgin Mary, and many other popes, you know, Pope Pius IX, and also Pope Pius XII, yeah. who later in the 1950s had another dogmatic statement regarding Mary, and that was her assumption in the heaven. Her assumption upon 
the moment of her death. So she was assumed into heaven, body and soul, so that her body did not undergo the corruption that you and I will undergo upon our death. Hmm. And that, again, is celebrated in the mid-August. That's celebrated in mid-August. Oh, that, that, that's interesting. Uh, and I, I know that uh, there are a variety of different prayers that one can give to uh, to Mary uh, for intercession. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I guess there's, there's a question that a lot of people have. When we pray to Mary or to Jesus or to some of the saints, we are asking, I think you pointed out last time, uh, for the intercession, for the assistance, for the, for the help. assistance. Well, when you're praying to Jesus, you're also praying for God to God, since he is part of the Holy Trinity, okay. one person of the Holy Trinity. So you can pray to Jesus and ask him directly for okay. help for whatever problem okay. you may be serving, whether health or, or whatever, personal problems or whatever. But when it comes to Mary and the saints, and even you and I, we basically pray to them and ask them for their assistance. I see. Now, who better to ask for assistance than a person who is already in heaven? Yeah. And we say, pray to the Blessed Virgin, say, Dearest Mary, intercede with your son, who is God, and help me with, so that he will help me with my problem. I see. It's no different from me asking you or anybody else to pray for me while I have this personal problem or health problem. Okay. And you would pray to God and say, please, God, help Terry. Uh, the same with the Blessed Virgin and the, and the saints. They will go to either to Jesus or to God the, and say, please help Terry with this problem. Okay. All right. Yeah, that's that's uh, rather interesting. Um, you, you know, throughout the the twenty two thousand years, etc., uh, the most famous apparition, if you want to call it that, uh, where Mary came and spoke with people, has been the uh, apparition at Fatima. Mm -hmm. Has has she been? Uh, uh, has she appeared many times before or else? She has appeared in various apparitions probably since her assumption into heaven. Huh? There are, or the church has records of uh, people saying that they've seen apparitions of the Blessed Virgin Mary going back hundreds of years. Hmm. Interesting. Now, even since 1900, there have been approximately 400 various apparitions of the Blessed Virgin that have been taken to the church for approval of these as, as religious events. Uh, not many of them were ever approved. Uh, in fact, many of them... <clears throat> would, would, would you say not necessarily approved, but just not be having enough sufficient uh, evidence. E evidence to categorically say this was an apparition. Okay, and you know, I, I tried to look up some of the information regarding the various apparitions, and most of them, the vast majority of them, basically say no decision. Okay. All right, and that could mean two different things. Okay. Uh, one, it could mean that the church has investigated and is still investigating this particular I apparition. See. I see. Or it could mean that they've investigated this and they're not taking any action. Hmm. So basically, it's a, almost a disapproval hmm. of, of the particular event. Uh, but they don't. The church. I don't know specifically why. The church does not say, no, this was not in, don't ever do anything. Right. Okay. All right. Yeah, they're just open. They just haven't made a decision one way or the other. Right. <laughs> That's interesting. Uh, one of the things that many people know, whether you're Catholic or not, is the rosary. Mm -hmm. And let's let's look at the rosary for a minute. Uh, I, I failed to, to bring one, uh, but it has five sets of 
10 beats. Right. And then it has a, a, a crucifix at the end and then three beads. And there's a crucifix and then there's a, a bead that's separate, which we, you start with the, the Apostles' Creed. Right. And there's three more beads in which you pray uh, the Hail Mary. Right. And then there's... Um, Another bead, which you start with the first mystery of the set of mysteries that you're okay. talking about. And, and so when you, when you say mysteries, what do you mean by that? There are four different sets of mysteries regarding the rosary. One is the joyful mysteries, which basically go from the Annunciation of the, uh, his conception with Mary, his divine conception, up to his was called early childhood when, oh, okay. he, when he was found in oh, the okay. temple. All right. He was at that time speaking with the elders of the, okay. of the temple. So, so what what you're saying is, you know, as as you go through the rosary, you're really uh, uh, starting out with the first uh, decade. Decade, yes. You go through ten Hail Marys. Right. Then uh, a Glory Be. A glory be, and you, a lot of people add in what it was called the. I think it's called the Fatima prayer. Oh my okay. Jesus, forgive us our sins. Okay. Um, and then you go to the second. And then you go to the second mystery, okay. the ones you're contemplating. Okay. And then the third, you do the same thing again, the decade of Hail okay. Marys, and then the third and fourth and so on. Okay. Now, when, when I was growing up, so, so, so in other words, a mystery has five decades. Uh, no, a set of mysteries. A, a set has, of has five I'm mysteries. I'm sorry. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. Uh, so a set of mysteries have five decades, and you said that there are four. There are four sets. Four sets. Uh, and growing up, I always heard of only three. Well, I don't remember the year, but the, there's a the mysteries of light was entered into. Uh, or, given to us by Pope John Paul II. Okay. Because uh, he had a good devotion to the rosary. Okay. And as a result, this gave us a fourth set oh, okay. of, of mysteries. Now, the mystery of light. Uh, what are some of the, the, the uh, mysteries? The mysteries of light are the... Um, the major events during the um, during the um, life of Jesus. Okay. Uh, the first being the baptism, his bab John, Jesus' baptism by Mary or by John in in the Jordan River. The second would be the wedding feast at Cana, where Jesus performed his first miracle, and the third mystery of light would be the proclamation of the kingdom. Ah. All right. The fourth mystery of light is the transfiguration. Okay. And the fifth mystery of light is the establishment of the Eucharist, which was done at the Last Supper. I see. I see. Hey, and so in these four different mysteries, when, when uh, Roman Catholics do pray the rosary, etc., they, they, it is their intent to put emotional feeling about what the mystery that they are, are yes. in their meditating upon. Right. Huh. Okay. That way they, you, can, you can basically live the life of Jesus. I see. And in, in, in coming from his uh, conception, divine conception, up to the, the coronation of Mary as Queen of Heaven when, after she was huh. assumed into heaven. So, uh, when, when did the rosary start? Right after Mary's death? Um, the rosary, no. The rosary as we know it, the form, if you will, the five okay. decades, was uh, is credited to St. Dominic, in, Saint the, Dominic. in the 13th century. Oh, okay. About the year 1210 to 1220, some, okay. somewhere in that time okay. frame. Uh, but there were forms, if you will, different forms of the rosary prior to that. He is credited, St. Dominic is credited with putting it into the, the shape that we know it now, oh, okay. the, the five decades for, and so on. And then later, um, other, other people in the church added 
and I don't know what set of mysteries he used. Right. But other the mysteries came to be under slightly different names, the joyful mysteries, the sorrowful mysteries, and the glorious mysteries. I see. And then later on, John, John Paul II added the yeah. mysteries of light. Yeah. Hey, and, and so uh, in the uh, the uh, rosary, etc., uh, Mary actually appeared to St. Dominic. And, uh, you know, they... Uh, he is said to have had an apparition. But, you know, again, I, I guess the church... I, no, yeah. I don't know yeah. The, yeah. Yeah. the status of that. Hey, as, as you said, there's also been 400 different apparitions uh, that Mary has been... And that's just since 1900. Yeah. Oh, 1900. Oh, wow. Yes. Wow. There, oh. there, uh, the, I think the 16th or 17th century, uh, one of those two, uh, there were approximately 700 reported apparitions. Oh, I see. I see. Uh, it's been going on for a long time. I see. I see. Huh. Now, there, the form major apparitions or, or the four ones that we're most familiar with are the apparition of Our Lady of Guadalupe in Mexico. Oh, okay. Uh, then there's the apparition of Our Lady of Fatima and Our Lady of Lourdes. Okay. And these occurred in various centuries, the 16th century, the 20th century. Uh, Fatima was 1917, if I remember right. Right. Um, hey, and and then, wasn't wasn't uh, that where Mary, uh, re, not requested, said that the people needed to turn their turn to God, because there was going to be some dire situations that were occurring. Right. Uh, that was when basically Mary asked the church to pray the Rosary consistently. Oh, okay. Um, because of, she predicted diary, she didn't enunciate or pronounce right. these events, right. but there were going to be some dire events that will, go, will come to pass, and the praying the rosary will help fight against these events. And I know that there are, are a special set of circumstances where, where individuals can also um, uh, pray, pray to Mary using the rosary. Uh, for instance, in, in some of the Catholic churches, you're able to take a statue of uh, Mary home for a week, I, I believe, yes. in, in which you, uh, your family, and you would say the rosary at a given time during the day. And it was, uh, <clears throat> again, it wasn't honoring Mary as God, it right. was asking for intercession for, intercession. for the yeah, family. My, my home parish in Wheelsburg, St. Peter and Chains, we have had a custom for many years, you know, even before I became a member of the parish, that the we have a statue of the Blessed Virgin that make, goes periodically yeah. to different homes. And you put your name on the oh. list, you get the blessed statue of the Blessed Virgin for a two-week period, then it goes on to another person. Person. And that's my wife is a, is a um, was baptized at St. Peter's, and this has been going on prior to huh. her huh. Um, birth. He, and, and, uh, it's, and I'm sure other parishes have the same sure, custom. Sure, and I, I I know that some churches are trying to do away or have tried to do away with icons and. And, you know, there's always a misconception uh, that when uh, we as human beings need something to visualize. And that, that's exactly what it is. It's just an aid. An aid. It helps us to concentrate our prayers to the Blessed Virgin. Or right. Or to, you know, if we have a statue of St. Dominic, for example, you know, we might concentrate our prayers to St. Dominic, saying, St. Dominic, pray for me to God to help right. me with this. Say, the Blessed Virgin Mary, pray for me to God, and so on. It just helps us to concentrate our thoughts on 
our prayers. Hmm. See, I've, I've tried to get a, a number of St. Patrick statues in my home. Well, you, 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 it's, it should, you should be able to. St. Patrick is a very famous saint of all the saints out of Ireland, or all the snakes out of Ireland. Uh, um, we, we only have a, a minute or two left, uh, and I, I know that we're just barely touching the uh, topic of Mary because uh, there has been a lot of theology, mm -hmm. a lot of of uh, dogma, a lot of right. information, a lot of beliefs about the Blessed Virgin Mary. Uh, but to sort of to just sum up, you know, what are some unique things that you have found about Mary that you wish to pass on to? Hmm. That's kind of a difficult question. <laughs> yeah, which one do you? Yeah, do you which pick? one do I pick yeah. first? Uh, um, I think the, the most important thing to me about the Blessed Virgin is that she is our spiritual mother. And she helps us with all of our problems. Just if you can remember when you were a child, that you fell down, you skinned your elbow or whatever, you probably went to your mother for right. comfort and aid yeah. and whatever. Mary serves the same purpose, if you will, for all of the whole church. Oh, okay. uh, she is our spiritual mother. And this happened figuratively when um, upon when Jesus was on the cross, he said to St. John, Behold your mother. And then he said to Mary, Behold your son. This was the, the action and the words that established Mary as the, as the mother to I all see. of humanity. I see. I see. Huh. I, and I, I know that the uh, church is rich in history, uh, uh, rich in a lot of knowledge, etc. Uh, you know, the, the Roman Catholic Church does not try to hide anything about the Blessed Virgin Mary. No. And I, I know that when it comes to the apparitions and, and the different things, you know, like the the secrets of the Fatima, etc. I, I I truly believe uh, that there's nothing nefarious about right. you know any of the the, the church just takes their time. And they want to make sure that everything is above board. Right. Uh, they wouldn't want somebody to come up with some type of. I've seen an apparition and she said something that right. was completely against church right. teaching. Right. They want to make sure that that does not get into the popular mainstream that, that could be detrimental to the faith. Hmm. That's a, that's interesting, and I know that uh, the month of May is designated as Blessed Virgin Mary. Is the uh, month of Mary? Yeah, and uh, there's there's a lot of significance to that. Uh, Terry, it's always a, a pleasure talking with you. I, uh, I I found that the the information that you provided is you know mind mind opening. Yes, uh, because we all. Uh, have our own set of beliefs that we grow up and think mm -hmm. what we heard, you know, when we were being taught, yeah. etc. So I'm okay. gonna, I'm gonna thank you. Oh, good. Uh, well, you're welcome. I'm happy to be here. Well, I, I appreciate that. On, on behalf of Terry Acox, Deacon Terry Acox, uh, I'm Patrick Dangle. Uh, thank you for tuning in to Inspirational Focus, and see you next month.